we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, I'll take a motion for uh, an approval of the agenda. So moved. Thanks from John. We have a second. I'll second. All right, second from Brian. All in favor of the agenda as described, I'll say aye. Yeah. Yeah. Aye. 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 And any opposed? Okay, very good. So um, in terms of the, the comments, I don't have any comments. I think people probably saw from Kirby a note. Um, there are a couple things to, you could follow up directly with him, but if there's anything that we need to talk about specifically, Ariane, there was a note in there about a, a bridge article. I remember the conversation. I don't really remember the exact, uh, all the things that were going to be involved in that article, but do you have, do you need any help, Ariane, with anything on that? Yeah, I mean, I was just going to, I think we were going to write or try to write an article about the suggested zoning changes in the CNU report is that right and not all of them just the one about more density i think um yeah that that does ring a bell yeah <laughs> so it's it's on my to-do list and i'm i'm happy to you know i was really just offering to start the process i think whatever i write will likely need a lot of editing but just to get the ball rolling um i haven't done it yet but i can do it this week okay great yeah, I think we could take two two approaches to that. One is I also know we're going to be doing our zoning. We're going to be, and we'll be discussing that a little bit later on. We were talking about having a zoning meeting um, yeah. to have some outreach on before we go to public hearing to say, hey, here are the changes we're going to be suggesting and try to get some public input and public support for some of those changes. So that also could be another yeah, opportunity up to tie those two together to say, you know, the CNU report was talking about this and we're, We've got a couple of options and here's what we're suggesting, but we want to hear from you. Okay, great. great. So when we get to that place in the agenda, maybe we, if we're able to put dates on the calendar, then that would give us an idea of when we need to have some drafts done because obviously we'd like that to hit the bridge before, you know, with enough notice that people can read it, take a look at it, and then know that there's an engagement meeting coming up. So we'll, we'll focus on that a little bit longer. And then the other note was, Hi, Maria. The other note was just about um, having somebody to come in and talk about housing. And I, and I vaguely remember the conversation, but I don't, I don't really remember exactly what that was to do. But if there are things, Maria, that you were going to, you can just go back directly to Kirby on that. Okay, let's take a look and see if there's any members of the public. Okay, seeing none, uh, I guess we'll move on to the first agenda item. So, Mike, what's the best way to go through these storyboards? Do you want to share your screen and just pull some things up? Yeah, let me grab that real quick. there so there was a couple of options I'm trying to remember i wasn't here for the meeting you guys kind of went through these but it actually looks like transportation you guys actually started so maybe that's the one I yeah i remember going through a couple of them kirby had marked them up a little bit and we had a discussion and then i i think the way we left it was that if people wanted to do any more editing they could jump on between meetings and do that yeah because you guys so did housing. Like we have some comments yeah you guys did did housing and i forwarded that on to se group so they could start building out that that web page and Kirby said you guys had halfway done through, I think it was transportation. So this is kind of where things were 
at, I'm not sure how you guys went through it. Usually Kirby has done a pretty complete review of these. Well, Maria, you've got a comment in there. Do you remember how far we got? Was that from our meeting that night that we you had put that in there about the walking and biking? I just don't remember. No, I don't think we even got to transportation that night. Okay. So we just did housing. Oh, it was just, just housing? Okay. Because he had, he had mentioned in an email, I'd asked him where we got to, and he said we got through housing and half of the next one. And okay, I didn't see comments in any of the other ones except for this one, so... No, I put the comments in before the meeting. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, we can go through these. Um, if everyone remembers last time, the the boxes are kind of cutting out the major sections that they work on. So the introduction is just that opening paragraph um, before we go into the plane and context, which are the maps. Um, yes, I mean, my issue with... The first sentence, I think it's been amended now. Before, it, it didn't include walking and biking. Um, it just went straight to driving, <laughs> finding parking. So I thought, you know, walking and biking should be explicitly stated. But it still doesn't say anything about transit, which is surprising to me. Um, so I think that could be included. Like uh, People do take transit. Um, that's a critical part of a transportation network. Is it like something we want to? Oh, I was just going to say, is that something we want to work on now? Is that something you want me to just work in afterwards? Well, it looks like it looks like Kirby has the comment there that includes public transportation. His alternative is that. Mm -hmm. that I think that like, was for a different. Was oh, that for different? No, you're right. You're right. Planning context. Okay. Well, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it was attached to this second sentence here, the decisions we make as a city. He wanted to change that to this plan moves the city forward to environmental sustainability and improved quality of life by supporting walking, biking, public transportation, and personal vehicles as a viable form of transportation. Yeah. That sounds I, good. I like that. Any other comments on that top part? Um, comment about the walking, biking dichotomy. Well, I think right now it's um, Kirby's rewrite. I, I like that phrasing a lot better. Oh, it solves it better, yeah. Yeah, because it was, I mean, the sentence as is was kind of like creating this, you know, either or thing between sustainable transportation and non-sustainable transportation, which I thought was unnecessary. No, I agree. All right, so planning context is where we get into the maps. Mike, can you just continue? I got to get a pair of reading glasses. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so it looks like the um, SE group kind of pulled out that the city of Montpelier has made continuous improvements to its transportation system in recent years. These improvements have expanded car-free transportation options in the city. Uh, and then they're, they're trying to outline which maps to use. So it looks like they're going to try to get a major one that just kind of highlights the network highlighting the transit center, the SIBO and AB shared use path, which is actually the technical name of the bike path. I think we could take out the, the non-car statement in that first sentence and it would still be accurate. Um, I think just saying expanded transportation options in the city is accurate. I think that's good. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? That sounds good. 
Um, so they're talking about the, the next set, they get kind of get into complete streets. Um, we actually have what's called the street typology map, which is probably a second map we would put in there. So they're, they kind of want to have a, you know, as you're going through the maps, the first one looks like it's kind of showing the complete network, you know, where are the major roads, the bike networks, bike lanes, transit stops, parking garages in Montpelier. <laughs> no parking garages. Um, but the complete streets, we do have a complete streets, street typology plan, which we can put in there. And then it looks like they're trying to emphasize some of the improvements in the future. Maybe, so as it's, right now it says, in the future, our transportation system must do better to address, must do better to tran transition to electric vehicles. Maybe it should just be like support the transition to electric vehicles. Um, you know, the city itself isn't, I don't know. It, unless they're talking about transit and city vehicles, I think they're really supporting a transition to, to electric vehicles. Better to yeah, I see where you, what, what you're seeing. So this is talking about the transportation system, and right. really the transition to electric vehicles isn't about the transportation system per se. Unless they're talking about like city-run transit and city vehicles, but I don't think that's what they're talking about. <laughs> You no, know, this was pulling from the, the the chapters that we had written before. Really, we're trying to get at, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of things we do well. Um, some of the things that we're still lacking in, one is addressing the stormwater. So most of the stormwater that runs off of our streets goes into the storm drains untreated into the rivers. And so we need to do a better job with that. And the other piece, big piece, is we need to start working on preparing for that transition to electric vehicles. Um, and so that means more charging stations and those types of things. But I, I think that sentence is, that sentence does need to have some rewording to kind of get yeah. at that point. And, and I'll point this out for some of the newer folks, um, the transportation committee, when, when I was working with them on coming up with the transportation plan, there was a really big dichotomy between two groups. There was one group, which was um, Montpelier needs to be transitioning us to electric vehicles and moving forward in that, in that way. Um, you know, we're still all going to have cars, but they're going to be electric cars and it's going to be better for the environment. The other group was, in 15 years, there aren't going to be any more cars, and we have to start preparing for a world that doesn't have cars. And that was, a, you know, a serious debate that was going on within that committee of, of, you know, we're only going to have public transportation, and it's not going to be um, private vehicles. So it really was a, came down to a, a really big vote at the end to kind of decide we can't we can't go for both. What's our vision? And the winning vision was we're going to be working on transitioning to electric vehicles. Um, and so that kind of changes the dynamics. That means, you know, do we or don't we support, and this was at the same time as us building the parking garage, do we or don't we support building the parking garage? And part of the group was, no, we're not going to have cars. And the other part was, um, yes, and that parking garage should be fully built out so that way it could accommodate um electric vehicles, which it was. It was going to have uh, 50 electric charging stations in it when it was built. Of course, it didn't happen, but that's a different story. Um, but that was a little bit of the background of where that, that piece came in and why this actually is an important piece to, to have in there is the fact that our plan is to transition to electric vehicles. So, well, first, I'm curious what that vote was. Like, what, what proportion of people 
are imagining that there aren't going to be private cars. It was closer than you'd think. I mean, it was a significant um, group. There's, you know, it's, it's uh, many members of like Sustainable Montpelier. You know, we need to be, it's it's e-bikes and uh, electric scooters, and we need more bike lanes. And if we didn't have car lanes, we could have more bike, bike lanes and more people would be able to bike. And mm-hmm. um, I, I advised them, I didn't think that was going to have, you know, I was like, it's your plan. You guys can make the recommendation. It'll eventually go to the planning commission. But my thought was, I don't think that really has legs to stand on once it gets beyond this committee Mm -hmm. and a couple of folks agreed as much as they would you know like to see a world where we didn't have everybody driving around in personal vehicles they simply felt the reality is that's what's going to happen and we should prepare for it okay so i think in that sentence just saying supporting the transition to electric vehicles would be to me more accurate that's what the city can do the city can't enforce you know (laughs) yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious. Force so people was, to buy electric cars. Right. This was before I. You guys wrote that part before I was on the planning commission, and I. I'm just curious what the transportation system is going to do to solve the problem, address the problems caused by stormwater. Is there going to be some kind of tax or something that's going to be used to like, treatment or like what, what was the vision of that? What that would look it like. Does, it does tie into this to this. Uh, the city is creating a stormwater utility now. They're in the process of doing that so they can start managing the stormwater that comes off of the streets and the parking lots. So there is there is actually a process to go through. Um, it also has a lot to do with how we um, build and reconstruct our streets. So actually Taylor Street was a demonstration project where the water... Um, Rather than the trees being um, simply just, you know, uh, tree cells, they're actually tied into the stormwater system. So it actually is where the, the there's special soil and the water's filtered through the soil. So the mm-hmm. storm, rather than sending the stormwater to a grate, it sends the stormwater to the tree well and the water soaks into the tree well and goes down and at the bottom of the tree well is the collection system. So the trees get to soak up as much of the rainwater as it can um, along the way. And some of that will still get into, you know, and and the soils that are in there also capture some of the pollutants um, along the way as well. So it's actually a a different system for treating the stormwater in the downtown area. Um, you know, because it's really hard in the downtown. Where do you, where would you filter all this water? Well, it gets filtered um, in these tree wells where the, there's engineered soil and those roots that can actually go under the sidewalk. And then there was actual discussions of having pervious pavement. And there is some pervious pavement on Taylor Street. So there are a number of demonstrations along Taylor Street when they rebuilt it to look at different treatments, including pervious pavement on the sidewalks so that way the tree roots could be under those sidewalks as well as a number of other ways of treating stormwater runoff now in a heavy rain some of it's still going to go down the storm drains but the hope is that we capture more of it treat more of it so that way it reduces and does uh, gets more phosphorus loading um okay fair mike fair enough that's a lot of detail it sounds like dpw has a role <laughs> yeah right I mean, yeah. that's what we're saying yeah, there is a okay, big there's cool. a big process to it, and there there are lots of things that we're trying to do better. Awesome, great, thank you. Um, so synergies. Um, this is looking at the comparisons to other plans. It's this Montpelier general transportation sector is forty percent of all carbon emissions. I believe that's a general forty percent. I don't know if we've got a specific amount, but Vermont. It's forty percent. So maybe that sentence could just be in Vermont, the transportation sector contributes forty percent. Be accurate.
Oh, I just had a comment at the end of that paragraph. Um, you know, going back to like complete streets. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so making that, not just making other forms of transport desirable, but making them safe and desirable. Um, I think biking is currently desirable, but it's not as safe as it could be. And that was actually a big finding of the transportation committee was that that was their big thing was safe and safe and desirable and, and that biking and pedestrians should be treated on equal footing as automobiles. You know, a lot of times we have all the transportation funding goes to building roads and then we have alternative transportation. And so they really wanted to not see biking and pedestrian as alternative, but as transportation modes. And I think this just ties to the to the main aspiration of the transportation chapter, um, which just goes to the fact that the goal, the aspiration is that trans that owning a car is not a requirement to live in Montpelier. You know, we're not requiring we're not requiring everyone to get rid of your cars, but you don't have to have a car to live in Montpelier. And that opens up a lot of possibilities for people who can't afford cars, people who have disabilities and can't drive. So that that was their primary goal. You, you don't need a car, but you have to have a parking space. You do have to have a parking space unless you're in the downtown. We're working on that, John. <laughs> you know, and, and this is just a this is I mean, Things have changed a lot since the, that research was done, right? Like the, the a lot of the state employees don't come in every day. Like, what are the needs in the downtown? I, you know, it's probably very different than when you guys looked at this a couple of years ago. Any other? Looks like Maria had some comments there. I thought this sentence was kind of jumbled. Um. We use only to require Yeah, it does kind of I mean there's just assumption like this sentence makes it seem as though like single use zoning districts require more parking spaces, but it's, it's really because of the way that they're constructed that people want parking spaces. They don't yeah, the single use, the, the key with the single use the zoning districts is that you're basically required to have to drive to move between right. working and home. So you have to have, because they're single use, you have to, there's very little opportunity to walk and drive between them because they're usually separated by so much distance. And usually the parking spaces then move everybody even farther apart. Well, I mean, I would, but I do I, think it's worded funny. The, I, so I kind of try to rewrite it. Um, I mean, there, if there was good enough transit, it wouldn't require driving between, <laughs> you know, like these are all decisions that we're making here. Um, so I kind of try to rewrite it to, I don't know, rephrase that the need for more parking spaces. And that it requires driving. It doesn't require driving. A lot of other decisions that we're making make it driving the, more desirable than any other form of transportation. So, you know, like there's. I'm I'm good with Maria's rewording. Everybody else? Yes. All right. I'll make that change. I'll put that on the list. I agree. You can delete the talented.
so this comment also goes back to like this age old conflict between like, you know, if we get rid of parking downtown, then, you know, small businesses won't have any, will lose their customers. Um, and so this idea of like that parking is required for patrons is I think inaccurate, especially in a town like Montpelier where a lot of people just walk to our downtown, which is kind of the point of having a walkable downtown. So yeah, usually I can pull out why we wrote something. I'm trying to figure out why that was written that way. Well, I think there is this like assumption that like, well, parking is required for customers. Like we need to have parking in front of this storefront or else we will lose customers, you know? Um, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah, usually for, for Montpelier, the big reason we need parking is the fact that we've got 6,000 more jobs than we have workers. So, but yes. And then. Could this be more ways? Yeah, I agree. This should be reworded. Whatever, whatever gets changed, this this doesn't make a ton of sense. I mean, does that sentence really add anything? I mean, of course, you're going to need truck deliveries. I mean, do, is that really adding any information? Can we just delete the whole sentence? Would it soften it up just to add in some and require some parking for patrons? Well, I mean, it, the tone of it, you know, it is crucial to ensure that our transportation system accommodates these needs. You know, it is, it is setting it up as like, yeah, this is crucial. This is needed and necessary for our, 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 our economic strength as a city. Um, and I, I, it's like, <laughs> compared to like a lot of the other language in this section, it is very strongly worded, you know? Um, yeah you know, requiring parking. So I think we could say that we're, we would like to ensure the transportation system accommodates industrial and commercial developments or, you know, and their needs, you know, kind of like balance it out a little bit with the needs of pedestrians and people living in the city. What if we just took out the and require parking for patrons? I mean, our transportation system, it is critical to our industrial and commercial develop, developments that they have the truck truck traffic. Crucial, our transportation accommodates these needs. We could just remove the parking part of it. Yeah, I think just putting... I think going straight to, additionally, it's crucial to ensure that our transportation system accommodates our industrial and commercial developments and their transportation needs. Like, I don't think that it needs to be, I don't know. It's a little clunky. I guess I gotta leave the, do you have to leave the comma? So basically delete the blue and leave, additionally it is crucial to ensure transition to commercial industrial needs. Look good? Looks good to me. Maria, is that good? I like Everybody? that, yeah. 
Because, I mean, that's what transportation is. It's like balancing all of these different needs in one place. And so it looks like there was a comment from Kirby on that, but it looks like we've kind of captured that. not sure what I was what if it was like rewritten already or what the this was referring to yeah What's this uh oh it must have been part I deleted yeah all right so then we've got the goals and aspirations We have just one aspiration and a handful of one, two, three, four, five goals. And you had a question on the appearance, improve the appearance of the Mount Pelias transportation amenities for non-vehicular travelers. I feel like there's, there's, a, there's a history here. <laughs> there is, yeah. Um, so a lot of... A lot of our streetscapes and everything really got dumbed down with the automobile because people drive so fast that you don't get to appreciate the details of buildings and, you know, no sense putting out flower boxes along the side of a highway. Um, so a lot of, a lot of our transportation system, if we're going to start to shift towards more bike and pedestrian um, and like the transportation committee likes to point out, everybody is a pedestrian at some point. You know, even if you're just driving your car to the parking lot, you're going to walk from the parking lot to the building. You're eventually a pedestrian. And um, it's important to have that streetscape and those transportation infrastructure be more attractive and, and not be, you know, just just another bridge and just another sidewalk. So that's that's what that was trying to get at is to try to engage and get more art involved, get things more um, animated, I guess. And so that that's why we actually have a what transportation, we have transportation infrastructure committee and a complete streets committee. And I think complete streets is the one that is trying to look at those types of things. So, um, you know, the painting on Heaney lot and um, the different artwork that's been going in, that's all goes to making a better transportation system. Okay. Are these, are, is the goal language locked in? Is that what's, uh, this, is that it's what's pulled from, from it's pulled from the implementation plan. So these are what's okay. in the implementation plan. I just like your phrasing better. <laughs> I feel like I always say, I always say this in meetings. But I would say like improve Montpelier streetscape, you know, like you kind of nailed it when you were describing it. Well, we'll try to remember that. I was like, yep. are potholes ugly? Like I didn't really understand <laughs> what the point of it was. But like, um, yeah. no, it goes to why, you know, why, why do we spend a little bit more on, you know, granite curbs as opposed to concrete curbs? And it's just little, little things that go in. But we can, we'll, we will, we will get another stab at the goals and the strategies. And when we do, we'll have to come back and, and touch on them here. Uh, now the implementation is publicly owned, which means we can do a lot through city policies. Okay, so it looks like Kirby made a word switch in there, which is fine. And that's pretty much what was in, in there. It just grabs up what were the various strategies we had. It's 
Yeah, I will add in the who is involved. I'm also going to have to add in those two committees. Said we've got a transportation infrastructure committee and a complete streets committee. Which was an improvement. When I got here, we used to have four transportation committees. And that was we had a bike committee, a pedestrian committee, the transportation committee, and the parking committee. And they all worked separately. So it's nice to have that. Down to two. All right, well, that, that looks good, right, everybody? So everybody happy? Yeah. So Mike, I think we look at the next one. All right, if you guys still wanna jump in and do one more, I will. I think we got time for one more. Is it marked up like that or do we need to do some more homework? That one has one comment from Kirby. Let me see if the other one has anything. Yeah, I'm not seeing as many comments on those. I don't know if we wanna hold off. Do people want to uh, have a couple weeks to review that, make some comments on it? That's the only that's the only comment. There's some stuff in here from Kirby, but other than that one, looks like it really hasn't had a lot of review. What do folks think? So I reviewed it, but I just I don't know natural resources as well as I know transportation. Like that's you know. So it's it's harder to pick things well, apart if it's not your wheelhouse. Yeah, so generally well, take a look at what was that, Gabe? I said let's let's go. I mean it's not very long. Let's just take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. So generally for folks who aren't familiar with this, natural resources is uh, it was developed with the Conservation Commission. So usually when we're talking natural resources, it can go everything from, you know, geology and soils to um, water resources and natural communities. Um, so it's a wide range of topics that it kind of can get into. It can get into air quality and stuff like that. But most of the focus was in Montpelier has kind of been around the natural community side. Um, We've done a lot of the plan. The Conservation Commission did a lot of work on mapping all the natural communities and identifying rare, rare species, rare um, communities, and then they also did a lot with vernal pools and wetlands. So there's, you'll kind of see there, there'll probably be a lot of that in here. We did. You know what, you guys? We did talk about this last time. We, and I just look back at the. Minutes. We did. It says we did talk about it. It says there were not a lot of comments on this section, is what the minutes say. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also remember us getting stuck on that that paragraph that's sheeted. Yeah. yeah. And then at some point, Kirby is like, let's fold our 10. I just hit the wall. So I don't know if that was during. <laughs> exactly. I don't know if that was during this or not, but we hit some wall. Yeah, this language looks very different than anything I would have written. So either you guys or Kirby changed it or SC group took a few liberties because this is not the way I usually write things. I think it was SC group. However, water quality and land conservation are critical priorities for the community. Yeah, I think this is where Kirby got stuck right here. So I think the one thing we were trying to do in developing the natural resources plan was to try to start to work, although they're both in the same department, we have a conservation commission and we have a parks commission. And so 
one of the things we were trying to do was to help get them to start thinking about, you know, um, identifying in the Conservation Commission the areas that should be conserved or preserved, and then trying to work with the Parks Commission about making sure that these areas get either easements or the city prioritizes those in purchasing into future parks. And they do have a natural resources inventory, and that's what it references here. And the vernal pools, and that's what I was telling you about. And these things need protection. So this is a little bit of the, the Conservation Commission starting to talk about what needs protection so that way we can start working in the implementation later on about talking about working with the parks to get those areas protected. Resources. So we've got a number of things we do need to map. There are a lot of things. I mean, this, this chapter could have a lot. This is where the maps go in the planning context. There could be a lot of maps that go in here. And I'll have to work with SC Group on identifying which ones to narrow it down to. I know we'd have the natural communities maps. Um, I know we have to have the forest block map because that's a requirement under state law now to show how our forest blocks connect outside to these other areas. And we have some actually large forest blocks because especially as you are looking at the Western side, they tend to connect into large forest blocks that are in Middlesex. So we'll have to get those mapped. So going back to that first paragraph that we were all kind of like tossing around last time, um, I still don't necessarily understand the point of the the livelihoods of most Montpelier rights aren't tied directly to the land and water. I don't know that that's that needs to be said. Um, what if we just what if it was just today? Very little of Montpelier is managed forest land or farmland. Period. Water quality and thoughtful land conservation are critically are critical priorities for the community. Like I don't think it needs to go into like even though we don't rely on the land for our jobs, we still care about water quality. Like I don't think that needs that's how it currently reads to me, <laughs> which I think is kind of like creating a weird like of course we care about water quality even if our jobs aren't tied to the land. I agree. I like that. I don't know what other other folks think. Generally, a fan of deleting as much as possible. <laughs> Take it out. All right. So, what was it again, Maria? You had it. Just like putting a period after farmland, period, and then deleting everything up to uh, water quality. All right, so, oh, today very little of Montpelier is managed forest land or farmland. Ah, got it, period. So the land, and so what was the next? Oh, just take that out to the period? I think so. I'm not sure whether to keep the however in there or not. Well, that could be a common. Uh, or how about water quality and thoughtful land conservation remain yeah. critical priorities for the community? I like that. <laughs> Still care. And land conservation remain? Yeah, critical. Yeah, pick out the R. There you go. For the and take out the however too, Brian, or keep it in? I don't know. That's. Oh, it's a. I would I take that one big sentence going to be. I mean, you could just, you could take, you could just make that one sentence. But 
and put a button instead of however. Talk about and go to John's comments and make it a very efficient. I don't see that being a but. That's my like even though it's not managed forest land, we can still care about water quality. It's not like a Oh yeah, it could just be an and. Could be an and. Are other people seeing what I'm seeing? I think it could be an and. I'm just I'm remembering now Kirby was going to talk about compact downtown, but we still care about the natural whatever. But I think this is mm. straightforward, simple. Oh, that's right. the inventory. That like we have. I think you just do that. Just that's that's good. Yeah. Right. Just get rid of the however or but. But yeah, you think cool. that's okay. Kirby had this whole thesis that like Montpelier decided to be a dense city in order to preserve the farmland and forest land elsewhere in Vermont. That was he yeah. That is actually one of our key features. Now that. I see where this, where he was going with this, and I'm trying to think about how to word it. I hate to use the word we. I don't want to use Montpelier again. I can just write it. Then we can adjust it. Uh, it's not going to be right. Yeah, how to get that all to fit into a coherent sentence. I don't know. I'd have to play with stuff for a little while. I usually sit there with a yellow pad and blast it over. But I think that's that's where he was trying to go, and he's and he's right. That's that is one of our key features that we always talk about. Um, for example, Act Two Fifty talks about protection of ag soils, and we expressly say in our zoning and in our planning, we don't protect ag soils in Montpelier. It's not what we do. Um, if we if we, you know, if we can, uh, if we can accommodate more growth, this is where it should be because that's, this is the most walkable, most bikeable um, area. And if that means building on some ag soils, that's okay. Because what we want to do is to accommodate the growth. So that way places like East Montpelier and Berrytown and Middlesex can have places that can remain agriculture in rural. How about saying something like by preserving its um, density or preserving its compact uh, city development, Montpelier can help support or can help protect the rural countryside, something like that. You know, I think it actually is. The more that we talk about it, I think it's a pretty important idea, what you just said, Mike, right? Like, that's the whole thesis behind all of our density discussions. So, 
You could, I mean, Kirby might want to stab at it. Maria could put in what she just said. Maybe we could just tell Kirby that we let it, left it there for him to take a look at. Unless you really want to get this to him right away, Mike. No, we've got transportation. We've moved one forward to SC Group. I was just trying to think, what if up top here, because I'm trying to put together a coherent paragraph. So if we were talking about, you know, today very little is managed forest land, forest farm and forest land. Um, I was thinking while at the same time, water quality and thoughtful land conservation remain critical priorities for the community. How about moving the sentence that you just wrote up into between those, between farmland and water quality? I think maybe to explain why Montpelier has very little managed forest land. Is that kind of where you're, what you're thinking? No, well, it's not what I was, I was thinking, but, um, cause I was just trying to go and get the context going while at the same time, water quality, land country, and green priorities. So I, I, you know, I think what Maria said is actually pretty good. If we move that to the front, because we're not really talking about density here, we're really talking about natural resources, right? So if you move that to the front, and then it, then it flows. Move this to be the first sentence. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first sentence. It may still need some word tweaking, but it's there. I think you might be able to put a semicolon after growth and then get rid of today. Well, doesn't SE group kind of like take some liberties? You know, that, it's like we can wordsmith a whole bunch, but they, they tend to have a little bit of license, right? Yeah, they're trying to take, they're trying to get out of taking license because they, they did a bunch of that and then kind of got some pushback. So that's why they wanted the words, as okay. much of the words gotcha. to kind of be here. So that way they could feel comfortable knowing they're, they can go forward with it. Yeah, if you want, I can try to work on that. A little bit more till my brain clicks into. Because really what we're trying to say is. I think it's pretty good, Mike. We can just take a look at it again next time. No. You want to fool around with it a little bit? And we'll just put that in for now and That's pretty close to what we had approved before when we talked about the synergies. Yeah. 
Yeah, they had a lot of goals. Everybody good with that? And we can we can bring it back up for uh oh, there's another paragraph. Sorry. Yeah, talks about the Conservation Commission and the Parks Commission, so that's good. So we'll look at it again next time. So you, you know, if you, you got a couple of weeks if you want to look at it some more, that'll be in there. Okay, Mike. So I think you're are you the one gonna provide a summary on S100? That looks like uh the state that they the legislature did a bunch of stuff we were already talking about. Yeah, so this is the Home Act. I just want to give everyone an update. I did put something in the, the weekly report on Friday, but I wanted to just go and address it with you guys. When I put it on the agenda, I hadn't finished reviewing it. Um, and it turns out, um, so S-100 is the Home Act. It has it's a lot of changes, but at the end of the day, the changes that go into effect on June 30th or July 1st, whichever date it is, um, we already meet all those standards. So we already have all those um, requirements met. So that part is, is good. The next piece, um, the second half of the, or the rest of the bill goes into effect on December, 2024. So 18 months from now. So we still have to go through and do a bunch of reviews of what will go into effect next year, but occasionally, We've had a lot of calls in the planning department, well, maybe half dozen calls at the planning department from people who said, hey, the Home Act is in effect, what can I do now? Pretty much the answer is whatever the, you could do in the past, which is actually a lot. There's a lot of, we have a lot of development potential, you know, so if people have ideas, we're trying to encourage them to come in, but most of what was in the, the bill for July 1st was you had to allow duplexes anywhere you allow single family dwellings, which we already do. Um, we put that in and you have to allow up to four units, depending on how you read the new rules, which whatever, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter because you have to allow up to quadplexes anywhere you have sewer and water. We already do that. Um, and we also allow them all as permitted uses as quadplexes everywhere. So we already meet the rule. Um, the, the way it was written was really bad and I won't go into that. Um, but regardless, we meet the rule anyway. So, um, I'm not too worried about that. So that's the big update. So if somebody does, a, for some reason knows you're on the planning commission and wants to know what we're doing, the answer is, uh, we don't have to do anything at this time to meet the rules. So that's interesting. I, read it i that wasn't the way i interpreted it but i'd love to chat about the the quadplex because we talked about that as a as a change um uh, that we were proposing with this next revision so if you went into like what's our smallest star uh, i know there's no density requirements in the downtown but what is it 1500 is that the smallest lot size outside um, of downtown yes yeah so if you had a 1500 you know our 1500 you can you could put a quad in there already no so according to our attorneys the the interpretation is you have to allow them in those areas but it doesn't exempt them from density requirements what we've been talking about for our zoning update one of our four options which may be you know it may be more than one that we pick we're going to kind of have that a la carte discussion one is not having any density requirement if you're within the design review district. So if you're in design review, you don't have to meet density requirements. Another one was um, we already allow single, if, if you're on a conforming lot, you can have a duplex regardless of the density. And we talked about making that four units regardless of density. The state law does okay. not say regardless of density. So the state law just says if you're in an area with sewer and water, you have to allow it, but it doesn't. That's the, that's the legal opinion because it doesn't say regardless of density. Oh, uh, you'll, there's going to be legal challenges on that one. Yeah, it actually, it's, actually, it's worded a lot worse than that. So it's there's What's a lot that? of questions about that one, but yeah. Yeah. Any questions for Mike on the, the legislation? Well, I'm just curious, what are the things that 
we'll have to work on for December 2024. Um, one piece that the it will impact for our conversations, whether we put it in this year's zoning amendment, or whether we wait till next year for the zoning amendment, is going to involve um, town the Town Hill neighborhood. Remember, well, most of you weren't there. John will remember it. Um, Kirby would remember it. We did um, the the Town Hill neighborhood pushed back really hard on the zoning changes. And so they ended up being zoned residential 24,000, which is a little more than a half an acre. Didn't meet the 90% rule, didn't do anything. We just, from a political reason, had to just go and say, there, there you go. You guys are, that's what city council basically ended up doing. Um, the new S100, one of the provisions going into effect next fall or next winter uh, in December is Everybody with sewer and water with uh, any area that actually says district, they're going to probably go through and fix that with both sewer and water must allow five units per acre. So they're setting that as the minimum density. So obviously you, all of our other zoning districts, res 9,000 on down, all meet that requirement already. Um, What's uh, and actually res nine? I've got to go and look at that, that maybe, or so we might have to lower that one a little bit. So we may have some discussion of having to lower res nine a little bit. But again, some of our discussions that we're having, if we say, um, as Gabe was mentioning, uh, if you've got a conforming single family lot, you can have four units. Well, that meets that five units an acre requirement. Um, so we, we just have to go through and see how to meet it with Res 9, but Res 24 is going to have a lot of discussion. How does that end up coming into compliance? Um, and it may be just they get forced into it. It may be something where we've got to make a proposal that says we're going to rezone these guys Res 8,500 because that's what it has to be. And, and I'd have to grab my calculator to see exactly what five units an acre going to be right around in that area because 43, 560 divided by five is going to be somewhere in there, 8,000 and change. So any that, other that questions? Will, that will Mike? be a question. I saw it looked like there were a lot of compliance and reporting requirements. I I didn't read those sections very closely. I don't know if that does that fall on the city. Is that more staff time and staff work or no? Mostly state. Those are state reports. Um, rather than make decisions, this um, this legislative session was all about reports. So um, the you know the Department of Housing and Community Development will have a lot of reports to write. Okay. If nothing else for Mike on this, anything else? Thanks, Mike, for the overview. So, Mike, if you, I, I know that we had, um, so we've got the stuff from the the AARP and new urbanism report, and then you had some other provisions and other things that were going to be recommended. Do we want to, are we able to put dates on a calendar so then we can walk that back and talk about the public engagement, or are we still too far out? I think it would be helpful if we start to put some dates down. Um, to think about when we want to do it because it'll it'll i think if we don't put some start thinking about some dates we're going to start it just is going to keep rolling and i know we've got two sets of stuff we want we're, we've been talking about one is this out you know start to have a public meeting before we go to public hearings on the zoning and then we've also talked about starting to have those public meetings on the city plan storyboards so my that's, thought that's true yeah. My my thought was I, I do want to start, I, and I've been pushing SE group to say that we would want to start to have those meetings, you know, by the end of, I you know, I said, I said publicly July, I wanted to start having these. So if we could get in by the end of July for those, that would be good. So maybe if we were thinking about a public meeting on the zoning in the first meeting of July, 
and then the zoning for the second meeting of July. Neither one of these is a public hearing. These are just public meetings. We're going to warn them. We've, we've got a new public information officer. Well, she's been here. Um, Evelyn has been working for us for a year part-time. She goes full-time in July, and she's going to help me roll this stuff out. But I'm going to need more time to get ready for um, the, the city plan stuff. So these are these are the outreach meetings, not the hearings. These are not the hearings. I just um, last time we did zoning changes. One of the things people kind of beat us up on was, well, you never came and asked us what we thought. Before you just put these things to public hearings. So we're like, okay. So I thought what we would do because we might not have every line in the strikeout ready to go. Um, I'm working with my staff i've i've got all those technical changes done those i've got a strikeout copy that's all done within my within my my office we are trying to nail down some final language for demolition we want to fix the demolition clauses we've had a number of people who've said it's too easy to demolish buildings in the montpelier and therefore people are going to demolish buildings and build these big boxes with flat roofs so i figure if we help come up with new demolition rules that may help abate that argument. Um, we also need to update our stormwater rules. That's just a technical thing that our TPW crew and us are working on. Um, and we also need to do some work on some sign rules. So within my office, we're working on some of those technical pieces, but we don't have to go to the public to talk about those. What we want to get from the public is here are all the things that we're working on from a housing standpoint. What do you guys think? What, what do you, the public, think? Uh, is this, uh, which ones? Because we were talking about an a la carte. We got a bunch of things. We could do the no density in the, the design review district. That's an option. Uh, the, everyone who's got a single family home can put in a quadplex regardless of density. That's a second option. I've talked about maybe doubling, maybe double the density. So, you know, you may be in res 6,000, but you can have one unit per 3,000. We already do that for single family homes, but this would allow triplexes and quadplexes to incrementally come in. Obviously you would you would either do the, the thing Gabe talked about, the four units, or you'd double the density. You probably wouldn't do both, but it, we'll see which which one kind of comes out as a, as a better option or a more palatable option. The idea being, if we can't get rid of density, we can move density to the point where it becomes more irrelevant. Um, it really doesn't become a barrier, but it's still there. So people who are worried about density, well, it's still there. There's still a density limit, but it's just not, not there. But um, we've got a couple of proposals. We remember we're going to make these changes to the use table. So like multifamily split into two groups. So there's five to 14 and 15 and up. So that way we've got more things there. We're going to make some changes to congregate living. So that way we don't discriminate against congregate living as much as we do now. Right now it's a single line. We'll break it into three or four lines depending on the size. So that way, so we've got a bunch of things we can talk about with housing and density related issues. And it'll also give a platform for the public to talk about you know, we're not doing enough, or maybe we should do this, or have we considered that? It'll give them an opportunity to talk before we finalize the plan and go to public hearings in, well, wouldn't be till August, obviously, if we've got another meeting in July. Um, okay, so if we did that, that we're looking at um, July 10th would be the public meeting. So I'm trying to remember the bridge publication schedule. Uh, does anybody know when that one issue that goes everywhere what day that's a Wednesday, right? I don't know. There's one out in the hallway, which I could grab, which has a date on it. We could add two weeks to it to see where that is. It just seems like if we want to get a letter out, encouraging people to come out and look at some of these ideas, then, you know, we're coming up on probably wanting to have that out. Yeah. Let me grab, I can see what, what the date was on that one. And Ariane, you said you, you'd have time to work on that letter, the, a draft, an initial draft this week. Yeah. Does anyone have a, 
or maybe it's in the notes. I haven't looked at the, just thinking about the suite of housing options. Um, I didn't take good notes on that last time, but anyway, I can get us started. <laughs> but if anyone has good notes, they can send them my way. So this one is labeled June 7th to 27th. So they looks like it's a three week edition. So I think we would have to start letting them know early that we want to put something in, then they would probably need it in. Let's see if I got my so, calendar. So July, it would be in the July 5th issue. And then we'd have the, the hearing would be the next Monday. And there's other ways we can we can get that out, right? I mean, what are the other ways the city tends to communicate on issues like that? Yeah, well, we like I said, we've got our new public information officer, so we have the website, we've got front porch forum, uh, we've got uh, Facebook. Um, so they do a much better job now than in the past of of having a coordinated public outreach. So, Mike, could you send to Arion? I can't remember which meeting we had. We had a meeting where we talked about the CNU piece, and then you also went through some of the, the menu of items. You know, we're, we're probably not going to include every single thing, but at least to give some examples, she's going to write the first draft of the bridge article. Um, you know, and then we could at least have like, okay, here are some things that we're, we're thinking about. We'd love some public input on. Did you find which minutes kind of capture that? I remember there was one week where we really, they were pretty good. It was pretty detailed. Yeah, I'll try to track that down. Okay, so if if uh, so, then I guess if we get that and we have it shared somewhere, uh, we could all look at that on the twenty sixth of June, right? Just be comfortable with what's going out, and then we'd want to get it in the hands of the bridge pretty quickly. And I imagine I don't know that the city will say exactly the same thing as the planning commission, but I imagine it would be pretty close. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, well, whatever you guys put together, they will they'll put it out in your name if they want if you know okay. if you guys are wanting to put something out, they'll say the planning commission has, wants you to know this. That sounds like a good plan. We'll get a, a first draft uh, and then we'll have time to take a look at it on the 26th. Okay, great. Okay, Mike, is there anything else on that that we need to talk about? I mean, I, I like the idea of the public information sessions. I do think, you know, like, I don't really know what that looks like. So I think we'll need some coaching. And should we bring in the public information officer to talk about how the, what that might look like? Usually, I think what I would be envisioning for this zoning one is, and it may be, we may be thinking about having this as an in-person meeting. Um, we'll probably have a, a Zoom option for people as well. Um, so, I mean, if you if you can't make it, we'll, but it's it's sometimes helpful to have this more in person. But I, it's it's a new world now, so I don't I'm not sure exactly how it would work. But there certainly would be a public comment. But usually, what happens is I would kick things off uh, with a a quick PowerPoint and ex explanation of what we're doing and, and, you know, then laying out what we're trying to get from them. You know, we want to hear from you on, on, on whatever's up, but these are the things we're thinking about doing. We think these are the next steps. Um, and we want to know what you think about our ideas. Um, is there ones you like, are there ones you don't like? And we really want to hear what you think because we're going to be putting together a draft and we're going to be bringing zoning amendments to go to public hearing in August or early September. And we really want to know before we put pen to paper, what do you guys think? And that's pretty much, and then we just leave it open and we hear from them. Um, for folks then, who this is like been, an open mic night. Yeah. And for folks who haven't gone through this before, a lot of times it's a lot of just sitting and listening and taking notes we sometimes ask comments, but we've tried not to get into discussions or debates with people. It's really about giving people the floor and and hearing what they have to say and and thanking them for their comments and thanking them for their input because it's important. Um, but we do try to kind of 
keep a little bit out of, even when we give our public hearing on it, we may explain why we did something, but we, we try to avoid kind of arguing with the public. We, we try to, you know, these are their opportunity to provide input. What do you think it looks like two weeks later for the city plan? Because that's a little bit more like people almost need to have really reviewed it before they show up, right? Yeah, and that one, you know, um, I'll be really under the gun to make sure we're ready for that one. And hopefully we don't have to push it to August. But if we have to, you know, I'm going to try to set things up to to, to get there. Um, it really will absolutely be in person and we might be moving it to a different location. I don't know how many people are going to show up. So, you know, sometimes we would do these at the senior center where we've got a little bit more room. We used to do them upstairs. I've, I've had some of these upstairs in lost nation theater. That's a little tougher space to get out of lost nation theater. Um, but we may talk about venue, but the idea is, Again, giving a presentation, giving a kickoff of what's the big process to the to the city plan that we've been working on since 2018. Um, try try to give them the broad def definition of what we've been doing and what we're working on, and then start to narrow it down to we have five chapters that were, or four chapters, whatever it is that we're we want to start getting input on. Um, this is just public meetings; these aren't public hearings. Um, and then have five different stations set up with five different computers and people can just rotate from one to another and we can show what the storyboard looks like. And then beside it, this is my vision of what it would look like beside it. We've got, you know, an easel or something that has a printout of the implementation strategies. So people understand we've got the storyboard, then we have our goals and strategies, and this is what the goals and strategies look like. And we want to hear from people um, you know, sometimes we'll set them up. So this sounds like a big production from the planning staff, right? That's what that sounds like. Yeah, but you guys, are, little, you guys are the ears. Listening? Yeah, you guys yeah, are the listening. ears, though. Are, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to know what, what we needed to do. So it sounds like you guys have both of those things, and we're just going to be on hand to listen, to feed, you know, get feedback and be prepared for adjustments. Yeah, you guys are going to have to hear what public has to say and then start to make decisions of, um, we bit off too much. We bit off more than we could chew on that proposal. Maybe we should back it off, um, which we, you know, we had, we did that with design review. We heard from the public, we pulled that back, um, different places we've had to, in some places we've gotten push from the public that said, no, I don't think you guys are doing enough. And I think that that's another option. So we hear from the public and eventually we're going to come up with a, with a proposal that we'll put into a public hearing. Um, but that will be much farther for the city plan. That's much farther down the road. This first one is five of the chapters. And then hopefully by September or October, we have the other five or six chapters. And then we're ready to go at the end of the year to start having the actual public hearings because the public has seen all 11 chapters at that point. And we've reviewed their public comments and we say, I think we feel comfortable going to public hearing. Let's go to public hearing and start the process. And then Do you think we should include that in this this letter, the date of July 24th, or is it just too early that we should do a second communication if we're going to do it then? Yeah, I wouldn't confuse the zoning update with the city plan update. Um, okay. I would I would stick to the one which is we're doing the zoning revisions and very good. So does that make sense to everybody? We'll look at the letter for next week and with an eye towards the 10th of July, and then we'll follow Mike's guidance as to whether we're ready for the city plan the, the following meeting or not. So any questions for Mike or? I just had a comment about the, I'm not sure how you typically like word this, but I like the idea of calling it like a zoning listening session, you know, to get across that we are here to, listen to what the community wants, as opposed to, you know, us presenting our lofty ideas to them and then having pushback probably immediately, <laughs> you know, but if, if it's phrased as like, we're here to listen, like, this is what we thought, what do you think? You know, I think maybe it sets off a different tone. That's great. That's great, Maria. Thank you. Yeah, I do. I think that would be helpful. And I think the fact that we have all been talking about this as kind of an a la carte, we haven't decided what our final thing is. And I think that's a good time for us to go to the public and say, hey, we haven't made a decision, but 
we've done this in 2018 and 19 and 20, and we've heard from the public, what do you guys think if we did this? Um, or we could do it this way, or we could do it this way. We really haven't, you know, what would you guys like us to, to follow up on? And hopefully we get some, some amount of input. Are there any lessons learned, Mike, from how you guys have done the engagements on the Elks Club property that, you know, in terms of getting the word out, getting better feedback, getting better participation or? A lot of that is um, the result of, of Evelyn. Uh, Evelyn, bringing Evelyn on part-time and most of her part-time work was organizing those community outreach sessions. So she's it, she, she's a tremendous asset um, because she's got all the connections to all the different outlets for getting this information out. And she also monitors it. So she keeps an eye out, which I don't have the time or don't, and, and don't do is, you know, actually reading the front porch forum posts. And when people come up and make a comment, then she's like, oh, I've got to respond to that person to make sure they understand this or... Uh, I'll have to have Mike or Meredith come back with a reply so we can make sure that this comment that was put on Facebook will have a good response to. Um, and, and so we, got the right team. we got the right team member is what you're set tell us. Yeah. In the past, it used to just be, you know, every department up to themselves and, you know, I'm not on the Facebook and front porch forum. So I'm not connecting with, with folks at that level. So they try to, her job is really to hit as many people and in many places as we can. Um, so that way as, as best we can not have people say, I didn't know I, if, if I knew about it, I would have said something, but I didn't know about it. Right. Very good. Any other comments for, for Mike or thoughts about the engagement? Okay, if somebody wanted to move to approve the minutes from our last meeting, I would take that motion. You guys want to take a minute if you haven't looked at them yet? I did just look at them, so I will move to approve the minutes. Is there a second to Ariane's motion? Sure, I'll, I'll second it. We got a second. Marie, you look like you're still, you still reading. Yeah, let's give you a minute. Oh, sorry. John, are you good? So uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. I'll take a motion to adjourn unless there's some other comments or, or questions that Mike has or for Mike or anyone else. I moved. We have a second. I'll second. All right, the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody.